Shalom, thank you, my friends. All right. Can I teach you something, guys? Just for a moment. Um, because I've been getting a lot here lately. And this is this may be why. I don't know. But I've been thinking a lot today about this person who's been attacking me here lately. Saying that I denied Jesus. And that I'm a liar. Um, this this may be why. And it, and it can go to answer A-R-K-Y's question here on that very video I did. Which is, it's got a lot of comments going on it right now and particularly A-R-K-Y had 14 replies on this one which is can you explain why you say God G-O-D and we're going to learn something about the Hebrew word God and please hang in there with me this is not about sacred name movement or anything like that this is about Taking the name of the Creator from 7,000 places in the Bible and replacing it with something else that means something totally different than what you think it means. When we're talking about Hebrew, English, okay, so the word God. Let's go to the Strong's Concordance. 1408 is the word God. Now we're, talk, we're not talking about yod heh vav -Hey, folks. Hua, which is translated later into Lord in Hebrew. Lord is Baal. In Hebrew, the word God, and that's what we're looking here, and this is not Gad. This is, this is pronounced God. Uh, Gimel Dalet is the original word. Gimel Dalad right here. Strong's Concordance, 1408, God. The Hebrew word God is a deity of fortune, of money. Is a deity of money, folks. Okay. Baba Yahuwah, please wake some people up. Wake them up. I want to share something with you because he brought me out of the darkness showed me something because when the word says call upon his name it doesn't say call upon his title or what was given because 7,000 places folks get a hold of that 7,000 places in your Bible Jewish sages of the Babylonian time decided to take the name out his name. If he tells you in his word, call upon his name. And the enemy comes later in the form of Jewish sages. Then they take his name out. Wouldn't you want me to tell you about it? Wouldn't you want me to share with you why I have a hard time saying the word God? Because me and my creator are connected now. He knows my heart. He knows when you come across knowledge, when you learn something, because we're going to talk about ignorance too. There's things, when you sin in ignorance, there's a difference. But when you sin and when you know the truth, there's, that's something else. So when you know the truth, when you want to grab hold of it, you know, the, the enemy came in the form of the church in times past and change things your Bible tells you it changes the times and the seasons and the laws okay so we're talking about the Hebrew word God English word God is transimposed over to mean the same thing or that that is the intention there Because we're talking about a Hebrew Elohim, Elohai. All the ones that wrote the Bible, in the gospel, were Jewish people. Okay? So, when things get missed in translation or missed in, in other words, uh, 
transliteration or trans you know what I'm saying I, I, I want you to get a hold of this now Gimel Dalek pronounce God Strong's Concordance 1408 and I want you to wake up I want you to wake up because on every bit of our money, it says in Gimel Dalit, we trust. With an all and I, it says out of chaos, order. Get a hold of this, folks. In money, it should say there, in money, we trust. And Yahuwah, El El Yon, the Most High, is going to bring that down. That's coming down. This this was worthless, folks. This deity right here is worthless. In Gimel Dalit, we trust. Now, get a hold of this. We're not talking about the Creator of heaven and the universe. We're talking about these people who have the all eye Illuminati in money we trust that's capitalism that's the that's what this com this country is all about it's not about the one that died on the cross it's not about him They declare in money we trust. And that's why that's going to collapse. It has to. He says, You will have no other God before me. If you worship this, you're in trouble. I'm not in it for me, Kurt Jurgens. In his video, accused me of being in this for me. I've lost everything. This is what I've got. This, this right here, this gray. I, I wasn't this old. You know, I was attacked over the summer. And who had taught me something? See, there is no losing. I don't lose. I either win or I learn. And I don't like get being drawn into drama. And that's what the enemy's trying to do here in the, this vessel this time. So I, I want to address two things at one time. And this, and this is because of this one video I had to do because I was attacked. Just, and I wasn't paying attention to this guy. You know, I knew last summer when I was being slandered and hacked and divorced uh, abandoned by my by the one closest to me uh, betrayed and, and hacked and run through the mill and I had people walk away from me and uh, you know say bad things were not true and I had to live through that but you know who said I will bring you through the fire you won't even smell like smoke. I don't worship this deity. Okay. And so that's why I sat in there in that particular section of the video that I don't feel comfortable using that word anymore. And it's not because this is a sacred name movement. It's because of proper word usage and yeah well, it, it, well it's King James right I mean you know, I heard Mike Harvard say one time Jesus didn't speak Hebrew he spoke King James which is a preposterous statement okay so that's where it comes from and I say and I, I'm, I'm bringing this to you with all humility not to you know say 
you're going to hell because you don't use a name. Uh, this is not about that. I want to call him his name. If I read the book of Enoch, it's, it's because I want to read what is there. Not, you know, just because the, the church says it's not a valid book. Um, yeah, it was quoted from in the book. I'm going to read it. Because I, I think there's truth there. So people, you know, have a hard time with that. So here we go. The word God. That is why right there. 1408. Now here's a really good article I want to take you to. Because this is what we're talking about. You know, the Gimel Dalit or Gimel Vav Dalit. There's meanings behind that, folks, in Hebrew. They say, the Hebrews say, Hashem, or the name. They don't dare say yod vav or Yehovah, or Yehua. They say the name. But as my friend Zev Porat from Messiah of Israel Ministries says, reminded me one time, we are to provoke them to jealousy. Use the name. He tells you, call upon his name. It's about restoration, folks. Restoration is taking place. He's restoring his name. It's not about sacred name movement. It's about restoration movement. And if you, and it's a really good article. I'll post a link down at the bottom where you can go and see this. Of uh, the Strong's Concordance and the, the lexicon and entomological and classical Hebrew dictionaries of these three words God, good, and God off. And here it is Gimodala, good fortune, luck, the name of the God of fortune, Gimodala. It's a Phoenician and Aramaic inscription as an element in many Phoenician and Aramaic private names. That's probably where the Gaddafi comes from, from Muammar Gaddafi. God. Good fortune. Now, how did that? How did that sneak in? How did that sneak in? Just because. I mean, where did the English word God come from? Where's the root of it? It's a word. It's not a name. It's a word and a title. It's a word, folks. Replacing the name. That's why. Let me try to bring this to, to, um, to a level. If your mother walked in the room and all she ever addressed you by his person person or if they come in and they say Marcus my son that's a difference using the name it personalizes it identifies the person you're talking to who are you talking to when you say Lord there are many bales there are many bales folks This is not about semantics. It's about correct word usage. What does the word mean? They tell you it's, it means Elohim. But it's not true. It's a Babylonian deity of money. A Babylonian deity of money. Gimel Dalad. In Gimel Dalad, we trust. Now they put an O there because that's how it's translated in English. But in Hebrew, that word, God, Gimel Dalit, or Gimel Vav Dalit, is a deity of money. I want you to connect that, connect it. In Yeshua's name, let that veil be lifted from your eyes so you can see <clears throat> the deception going on, even in the church. Even in the church. <clears throat> so that's why. A-R-K-Y. That is why. 
and I, and I, and I present that to, with you in, in greatest humility. I'm not being arrogant. I'm saying you're going to hell if you don't say, but here's the thing. When you know, when you learn something, what do you do with it? What do you do with it? And I had to, I had to deal with that myself. He wants you to call upon his name. Another word, another word of Gimel Dalit is wormwood. I think that's really important to point out too. Wormwood, bitterness. And what a bitterness it stirs in some Christians. And I use that word, Christians. That's a title too, Christian. What does that mean? You know, Christians beheaded people too. Crusaders, Christians. I'm not a Christian. Folks, I follow Yeshua. I follow the Savior, the, the, the one who died for me, who gave his life. Yeshua is his name. The Greek called him Jesus with a J, comes from the word Zeus. Get a hold of that. His name is Yeshua. I'm not saying you were not saved or baptized in the Holy Spirit or anything if you use Jesus. I'm just telling you, get down to where the word's from. And that's why I've been saying Yeshua or Yahshua. I simply tell people, I call him what his mama called him. That's it. I'm done with that. It's not about you know, trying to be, uh, you know, uh, what have I been called? Uh, Judaizer, sacred namer, things like that. Let's, I'm trying to bring you truth here. And I've been attacked. I've lost everything in my life. I'm not, I'm not in this for me. I'm in it for him. And for you. So, <clears throat> that's my explanation on that. And that's where I'm standing on it. And that's almost 18 minutes. I want to get back to why I'm being attacked in another video. And it's because of this table I've been working on. And it's, you know, when, when I see what's going on and I'm being attacked, first thing I need to ask is, what are you working on? What are you working on? Because it stirs up. It, man, it stirs up stuff demons so we're going to get into this this is what we're going to look at in another video so shalom she will bless you and, and listen i love you guys i don't i don't i'm not i don't hate kurt i pray for that brother matter of fact let me just teach you one more thing before i go and i'm just meaning to do this luke 23 at the crucifixion Yeshua being crucified, he's being nailed to the cross. And he says to him, Abba, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And that's something deep there, folks. There's something deep there. Because if you go to Levit Levit Leviticus 4.13, there's something, there's a, like a provision. And this is what Yeshua was doing. As they were nailing him to the, to the cross, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He was invoking a provision in Leviticus of sin through ignorance. And the whole congregation of the Israel sin through ignorance, the thing be hid from their eyes of the assembly, and they have done somewhat against any of the commandments of Yahuwah. Concerning the things which should not be done, and they are guilty. So they were definitely guilty of it crucifying and killing Messiah, but it had to be done. It was hid from them intentionally by Yahuwah. They could not know who the Messiah was. It was only revealed to certain ones. And so Yeshua knew that. And that's why he said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So, uh, that could possibly be what's going on with the attack here. I thought about that today. However, if it is done maliciously, 
and intentionally that we got a serious problem because I've been looking over at it at his channel at some of these tables that he's got and, and the folks he's he's using this this Bible code generator this is what he's using he's putting words in and, and I have no idea who this is or whose website this is this could be a brain dead monkey on the other side giving him feedback that's the strange fire this man is playing with so we need to be praying for him because his his eternal soul is at stake here because anybody that he harms in what he's doing there and this is my argument with with the Rael cult who is is there's some atheists over there fooling a lot of people with Bible codes I mean, you can take the Bible codes and use it for evil folks it can be done it's called strange fire here's the thing Laban the father-in-law of Jacob was a heathen he had idols and teraphim and he even had an ephod a holy ephod is something used by the high priest and the holy holies to communicate with the creator Laban had one. What was Laban doing with an ephod? Did it make him a priest? No. It made him a heathen with an ephod. There is no anointing there for him to be using that garment. But he had one because he was a superstitious man. The thing about YouTube is any brain dead monkey can have a channel and teach heart surgery that doesn't make him a heart surgeon okay so please use discernment please use discernment I'm fighting a battle here and I didn't ask to be the Bible code police and that's why I've ignored the guy he's tried to attach himself to me and I had to distance myself but as I see now in hindsight I should have been paying attention because he is doing a lot of damage over there. Making predictions and, and things that I don't condone at all. That's probably why he has one of the reasons he had a problem with me. Because I won't even, I won't vet him. And I'm not going to. You got no business looking at codes and putting out videos on YouTube when you've been, this is, you're, I've, listen, I didn't just jump on YouTube to do this. I put in about 20,000 hours or more at code search and it didn't resist it you know, when, when he pushed me to go on YouTube because I just didn't want to do it. It was under an extreme duress that he forced me to go. Which has been, been a common occurrence in my journey. No choice of mine. Just he... he presented and said you this is what you do I take it seriously and I forgive the man for what he calls me what he says to me because he's not doing it to me he's doing it to Yeshua the Bible he said Yeshua said what you do unto the least of them you do unto me and so he's forgiven because I'm forgiven and I want to leave you with that folks She'll bless you. And thank you for subscribing and supporting this ministry. Um, I'm here for the duration, as long as he has me. Shalom.